All right, well, in an effort to eat meat and get us all out of here as soon as humanly possible, whilst you eat, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, so if you did, did everybody who wanted a packet get a packet? Oh, Joanne doesn't have one. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. And just, I know it might seem silly that we're using microphones, but we are recording this for some who might not have been able to be here, so uh, that's why we are using microphones uh, today. So let's, let's do this. On page two is our agenda for this afternoon, and I'm going to do the opening prayer because David is not with us. So let's, uh, let's open up with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us, the ability to, to be in your house, to gather, to worship, and to praise you, to hear from you, to now break bread and, and to share this time with you. Father, I ask that you would just be with us as we do the work of the church, as we, uh, again, report on, on things that have happened and things yet to come, and, and how you're leading this church, and, and how you're guiding and directing us. Father, I pray that you just be with us and, and during this time. We ask this in your name. Amen. Okay, so let's. Oh, sorry, Beth. Hey, Zach, why don't you take that bite? Could you come here? If I could have uh, members of this church over the age of 15 years of uh, age or older who are voting members, please stand to receive your ballots. Zach is going to go around and hand out the ballots. Please do not mark them, hold them uh, as we need to vote on them. So if uh, Zach comes and you get your ballot, you may be seated. So Zach, just to the folks standing up, and then once you have your ballot, you can be seated. All right, does everyone in membership have a ballot? Okay. All right, so just some quick instructions. We have two uh, elections that we are deciding today. The first is for, thank you, Zach, for the church board. And so you can see the instructions there. Uh, only vote for five. Now, you can vote for less than five if you would like, but if you vote for more than five, your ballot will be null and void, and we cannot count it. So please only vote for five or less that are on the ballot for church board. The next election is for district assembly. Uh, we are uh, entitled one uh, delegate to the assembly for the, uh, the Prairie Lakes district. And uh, by default, Kristen's going because <laughs> she's going to be with me. And so she has uh, willingly put her name up to be uh, delegates. If someone else uh, is going and would like to be an alternate, we can seat those later. But the only one that we have to uh, do a yes-no ballot on is our actual um, uh, delegate to the assembly, and that'll be Kristen. So that is a simple yes-no vote. So uh, with the ballot in front of you and the instructions, I would like to call for a motion to accept the ballot as presented. We have a motion on the floor. Second. Oh, that was a tie. <laughs> I heard Ron, but I saw Faye. So we'll go. We'll go. Okay, we'll go with Ron because I heard Ron. <laughs> All right, uh, we have a second. We have uh, we have a motion. We have a second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All right, the ballot passes as presented. Please go ahead and mark your ballots. When you are done, turn it face down, and I'll ask uh, Zach again if he could go gather those up for us. I'll give you just a moment. Okay, when you're done, if you just raise it up and Zach will come by and, and grab it. And then um, our board of tellers is Kristen and Shelly. Zach, Zach, take your time, buddy. You can hold them all at the same time, buddy. <laughs> okay, our board of tellers is Shelly and Kristen. When you guys are done eating, <laughs> you can go uh, and count these. I will need them uh, back before my report. Okay, all ballots in. 
No? Okay. No. Take your time. Take your time. Take your time. If this runs long, I'll just blame you guys. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Okay, all ballots in? Okay. Are you guys ready to... Okay. You good? All right. Well, if you guys want to just go in the office and, and count those, go right ahead. Yeah, and take the blanks. Okay, okay and we will have those results a uh, little while later in our meeting. So this time I'd like to go through just through, through some of our board positions and their reports. So I'm going to start off with our board secretary, Miss Jamie Shelton. And yes, you have to stand up. <laughs> Her report is uh, in your packet right behind the agenda, so if you'd like to flip over to that and read along with her, you're certainly welcome to do that. Go ahead, Jamie. Throughout the past year, we've been working on um, many aspects of the community outreach, and by God's grace, we have accomplished um, great things. Just to list a few, um, our first Upward Sports Basketball, our MOPS, VBS, Labor Day, uh, Labor Day celebration, 4th of July celebration, fantastic Wednesday night um, Bible studies, kids studies, and a youth meeting that meets with the Hawks on Wednesday evenings, um, the lovely ladies luncheon, trunk or treat, membership classes, Thanksgiving baskets, giving tree, Sunday school baskets, or Sunday school breakfasts, I'm sorry, <laughs> and our um, card holders on the backs of the chairs, as well as our um, new website update or upgrade, is that correct? Um, we have lots of activities in our missions, including um, having the Garms family concert here, our missionaries from China and the Gideons from Minot. Um, it's exciting that we've purchased a baptismal and we've had three baptisms, which um, were the first ever here in this building, and God is good. Um, we have had two weddings this year. There was a great board planning meeting and things are moving along nicely. It is also very exciting to report that Doug South has been training under us to achieve his um, local minister's license. And it's been, um, it's been a very blessed year. Last year, I reported that our church was growing and stretching um, by leaps and bounds, not just in numbers and programs, but in personal and spiritual growth throughout the congregation and this year the growth continues in the lives of um, all of us and I am again blessed to be a part of this family of God. All right. Thank you, Jamie. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Um, Jamie has been the board secretary for the last three years. Okay. Um, she, she is actually the very first one that I came in contact with when the uh, district superintendent contacted me uh, about the possibility of, of coming here to be the pastor. And so Jamie and I kind of hit it off right off the bat, and uh, she is going to be stepping down from the church board this year. Um, bittersweet, because I know that she has lots of other things going on, and so I understand why she is, but uh, she has she's been a good friend of mine, not just you know on the board, but a friend of mine, and I appreciate all of her efforts and, and what she's done. So thank you for everything you've done to uh, to help pave the way and uh, for thank what. Thank you for letting me make so many mistakes. Yeah, oh, you're welcome. That's all right. We all make mistakes. That's that's why pencils have erasers. But <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, I just want to say thank you very much. And if we could just give Jamie one more round of applause, I'd appreciate it. All right, we have our uh, treasurer's report, and so Joanne, I'd ask that you come and present that. Uh, it is, I guess, what, page three of your packet. <coughs> there is a front and a back to it, so Joanne, here you go. Well, it's been my privilege to be the treasurer for the past quite a few years. You're not going to put a number on that? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> uh, this, I want to point out, is just for the first 11 months. We still have one, two more, one more Sunday left in our assembly year. Our assembly year ends on um, June, or May 31st. Yep. So, but this is for the first 11 months of our church year. And I'm not going to go through all these numbers. If you have any questions on any one of them, uh, feel free to ask me. 
Uh, we started out the year with $20,098.57, and that is just for the church. Um, if you look on the back of this page, there is also for um, NMI, NMI and the building fund. Um, I do not take care of the Sunday school money, so that is not on this report. But in our church, we started out with the amount I mentioned. Uh, so far, the income has been $68,252.85, which is miraculous for a church our size. Uh -huh. I want to thank everyone for their participation in the offering. It listed the expenses for the pastor, for utilities, miscellaneous, uh, Nazarene Bible College, and the budgets, which came to $64,002.26. Uh, at the end of April 30th, we had a balance of $24,349.16. Uh, turning over to the building fund, you can see the numbers there. Uh, and NMI, the only expenses that we did have with NMI was um, housing the missionary family that came here. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, um, those of you who were here and remember the hills, I believe, uh, she is coming back to the States because they are expecting their third child. And uh, she's had some problems, so uh, she's coming back pretty soon now if she hasn't, isn't already here. So, and I love the Lord. My verse has been, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. And that has gone with me from high school clear up here. So, any qu quick questions that you have about the treasurer's report? One thing I will note is for the membership, um, our financial records are open at any time that anyone wants to come and, and look at them. Uh, that is, I guess, one of the perks of membership. If you ever have a question about how uh, we are using the funds of the church, our, our records are open uh, to the membership at any time, as well as our board meetings. Uh, if at any time you'd like to come and sit in on a board meeting or, or uh, bring uh, a request to the board, you certainly can come and do that as well. But, but yes, any, any questions about this report? If you have a question later, you can call me or you can talk to me sometime when you have a time. So, thank you. All right, thank you, Joanne. Appreciate it. Let's give her a round of applause. <clears throat> There's a, a reason that people like Joanne handle the books because, you know, you heard my comment about 200% growth off of four people. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that is why I'm not an accountant, by the way. So. <laughs> So, anyways, all right, um, next, uh, I'd like Beth to come and uh, give her SDMI report. For those of you who don't know, SDMI stands for Sunday School Discipleship Ministry International in the Church of the Nazarene. They couldn't have made that a longer title. But uh, anyways, Beth, how long have you been SDMI? You're not going to put a number on forever. it either. <laughs> <laughs> all right, go ahead, Beth. Okay, hey, Philippians 4.19 from the NIV says, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. And I am believing in this verse as we go into another week of vacation Bible school pretty soon because we need workers, so God will supply our needs from his riches of people. Okay, God will supply all the help we need for these children to learn about him. Um, many people have been involved in SDMI, including all of you. If you come to church here, you're involved. The Sunday school teachers this past year have been Joanne O'Neill, Kristen Griffin, Shelley Breckus, and I, with others filling in when one of us was gone. Um, Wednesday night's children workers were Shelley and I with the slime unit on Jacob in the summer, and Joy Ankenbauer and Christy Helwig with Quest in the school year. Children's church workers were Jamie Shelton, Joanne O'Neill, Stephanie Clark, Christy Helwig, Sam Bloomquist and I. David O'Neill has done a good job of taking care of the statistics. 
like the attendance and the offering and the five minute warning bell and then ending bell after <laughs> at the end of the the service or Sunday school. So thank you all for all you have done. Hey, we've all kept busy <clears throat> with many activities this past year. Some of them include the Labor Day picnic at the boat docks. We had a good time eating, playing games, fellowshipping, and then there was the eaves trough game. <laughs> okay, trunk or treat with several cars out here giving and people giving out treats. There were about 140 kids that came by with most of them having their pictures taken and uh, there were lots of adults that came through but not very many of them wanted their picture taken. I don't know why, but anyway. <laughs> some of them had a picture taken with their kids. So Father's Day and Mother's Day, Day gifts were given out in the past year. Bible school is always a highlight of my year. Um, just as a side note, this is the last year I'm doing it, so. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so God told me I could do this, and my health told me I could, so. <laughs> anyway, shipwrecked, shipwrecked was held in the first week of June last year, and we ministered to 60 kids and their parents and 33 staff. Thanks, thank you to all. The average for the week was 53. And then we had a cookout on the Sunday following Bible school with hamburgers and hot dogs for all. And we had 60, we have 69 kids registered right now for Roar, which is our Bible school this year. And life is wild, and it might be. But God is good. Okay? All the time, yeah. The Canmere Kings Kids Club had several activities. In August, we had an outdoor fun day that planned but ended up having an indoor fun day because of the rain. The game Don't Eat Pete comes in handy many times. <laughs> the kids like it though. September was the VBS reunion. We had a treasure hunt with volcanoes, sand dollars, sand that doesn't get wet, in the bamboozled jungle and other fun events. October was the time to gather and carve a pumpkin. And some people are very talented at that. <laughs> December <laughs> December, we celebrated Jesus' birthday, and February was Valentine Minute to Win It. Who knew that you can have so many Minute to Win It games with conversation hearts? <laughs> April was the Easter celebration, ending with an egg hunt. November found the church participating in the Operation Christmas Child Project, filling 34 boxes. And we participated in Light Up Night with a float and also doing ki kids crafts at the Memorial Hall. A ladies' luncheon was held in December, and in March, the progressive meal was held with lots of fellowship and good food. A ladies' Bible study was held on Thursdays, and men's Bible study was started and meets on Saturdays. And uh, our averages this year, we ministered to an average of six children, five teens, and 16 adults <coughs> Excuse me. each week with a total of 27. With God's help, we can grow in the next year so more people can become disciples of Jesus. I love the Lord and strive to be a follower of him. Respectfully submitted, Beth O'Neill. All right, well, thank you. Let's give, her, let's give Beth a round of applause. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's not an easy thing because sometimes the title SDMI can kind of be deceiving. It's not just Sunday school. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, Bible studies, small groups, uh, of events that we do kind of fall under the SDMI uh, umbrella. So Beth is a very busy woman. <laughs> so um, Beth, I just want to say thank you. I appreciate everything that you do. I, you, your plate, I think, is just as big, if not bigger, than mine. <laughs> so uh, I, I thank you for your, your tireless efforts and, and everything that you've done. So I appreciate it. And uh, we're just not going to do on the whole VBS thing right now. Because if God told you that, I can't argue with it. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, well, thank you again, uh, Beth, for that. Uh, Lane, I did not know if you had a report or not. I put you on the agenda just in case you did, so I don't want to leave you out. So I'm guessing because you're standing up and walking this way, it means you do. <laughs> there you go, brother. But, uh, Lane uh, handles NMI, with, which is Nazarene Mission International. He stole my thunder. Nazarene Sorry. Missions International. We can, we'll just delete that from the recording. You can just say it again if you want. I haven't been a very good leader this last year. There's lots of things that the Missionary Society can uh, be a part of. Um, you see over here on the, on the wall are some 
some books and they are old books every year we get new we can get new uh, new set of books and and there is adult books uh, no that's the wrong way wrong <coughs> wrong phrasing let's see there's a bo books for adults and books for children and books for teenagers um, the books are to me are very interesting they tell the stories of, of what missionaries have gone through one of them was uh, the, they were out, the missionaries went camping uh, and this is in the early days because they didn't have a Land Rover they had a horse and horse and, and wagon and they were <coughs> were camping and hunting they built a big great big lawn uh, big, big bonfire and during the uh, during the night way or not in the light but night but in the evening all of a sudden this apparition rose up out of the middle of the of the coals and of course their first thought was that the natives were really right in their idea of of uh, demons and that uh, <coughs> inhabiting the the countryside but what it turned out was that they had built a their bonfire over the den of a king cobra and during the during the evening way it got hot for it and it rose up through the coals scattering coals around and of course then it flopped over into the coals and was writhing around and scaring coals all around <laughs> they estimated it'd be about nine or ten feet long so that's one of the exciting things one of another one was talked about where the the uh, mountain, the lion chased him down the mountainside, and then the one that really got me was uh, the missionaries uh, station. The mission station was built on the on the high ground. The village was on the low ground, and during the evening, a flash flood came through the area, and of course, the natives were scrambling for the trees and the brush to get up out of the water. And all during the evening way, he could hear the the people calling in their native language, help me, help me, help me. And as the night went on, the voices got less and less and less until by morning there was no, no more uh, voices asking help me. And God impressed upon him that this is the country of Africa and this is the people that are crying out, help me, help me, help me. You can see on, our, on the uh, financial report that there's, we do a lot of, quite a bit to support uh, missions by Easter offering and alabaster, alabaster offering and uh, uh, Thanksgiving offering and then the the hills were here for a uh, that we try and have a, a missionary come every year to give us an update on what they are doing in their in their area um, I was to the doctor the other day she said I know you notice you're talking slower this year than you were the last time I visited so I don't know if that means that I can talk longer and say less or <laughs> Or what, but anyway, that's my report. <laughs> Obviously, Lane, that's a trade that I have not learned, so. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you for that. Um, and you know, the interesting thing about missions is, you know, I've said this before, but a lot of times we get in our minds that that mission work has to happen you know over the pond that we have to leave this country to go and do missions work and you know go on these big long mission trips and raise all these thousands of dollars when when quite honestly the mission field starts at the edge of our parking lot you know the mission field is the houses and and everything right around us and so um, everything we do <laughs> in my opinion 
falls under missions because it's our, our desire and our goal to, to reach the lost for Christ, to do what the Great Commission has called us to do, to go out into all the world. Well, all the world starts right here. So, um, but I'm not discrediting missionaries. The Nazarene Church has been... Um, there are more Nazarenes outside of the U.S. than there are inside the U.S. Let's put it that way. So the Nazarene Church has put a large and a huge emphasis over its entire point of being into emphasis and missions. So, um, so our 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 goal, our hope is to to do more of that. Unfortunately, we don't get a whole lot of missionaries that come rolling through this part of South Canada. So we, we take advantage of them when we can. Um, so uh, hopefully over the next uh, year or so, we'll have, have more chances to bring missionaries in and to hear what God is doing out in the Nazarene mission field. Amen? Amen. All right. Well, before we get to my report, I have the uh, results of the election. So I will try and do my best lane impression and say a lot and speak slowly. <laughs> We had 14 total ballots cast, voting for five only. Your board for the next year is Ron Anderson, and this is in no particular order, by the way. Ron Anderson, Kristen Griffin, Beth O'Neill, David O'Neill, and Lane O'Neill. Let me repeat that. Ron Anderson, Kristen Griffin, Beth O'Neill, David O'Neill, and Joanne O'Neill. As far as the district assembly delegate, Excuse me, um, for, again, 14 ballots uh, handed out, 11 yes, 1 no, so sorry, honey, you got to go to assembly with me. <laughs> You're going to be there anyways. So Kristen will be uh, the delegate for the district assembly. So one thing I do want to just say, uh, just in case any of you are wondering, how can, how can the pastor's spouse be on the church board? Well, there are situations where that can, uh, provisions are made for that. Uh, just so you know that the only times that she is not allowed to be in conversation or in voting or anything like that, if it has to do with uh, salary or uh, package discussion for, for myself and the family. So uh, she's not involved in any of those things, but uh, she'll be, she is a member of this church. She just happens to be my spouse, uh, but she can be a part of, of all of that as well. So... So, there you go. Uh, I will ask that the, the new board that we meet just briefly following uh, this meeting just to kind of get a date set for um, our, our first meeting for the next church year, which will start in June. So, the current board will continue to serve through the end of May, and the new board will take over June 1 when the new church year begins. So, okay. Oh, wait. I'm next. Yeah, I know I have to stand up over there. Remember, I made, I made the rules, remember? <laughs> I'm just not used to an adjustable podium. So, all right, well, you have my report uh, in front of you. i got to get something to drink, excuse me. It sounds like I've been talking a lot or something. <clears throat> Dear church board members and congregation of Kinmer Church of the Nazarene, it is my honor to present to you my second annual report as pastor of this wonderful church. God certainly is moving and doing things within the people who call this church their home. It's, certainly, it's been wonderful to be involved more and more in the lives of many of you in one way or another and to walk alongside you on this journey called life. I'd la like to thank all of you for making this such a blessing of an experience that I, of being your pastor. Over the last 662 days, Yes, I did that math on the computer. <laughs> I have enjoyed the privilege of getting to do what I get to do. I've said this before, but I don't know that you guys actually maybe understand this. I, I get to do this. <laughs> I, I do not consider this a job. I do not consider this something that I, I have to do. I, I get to do this. And so it's, it's my honor and privilege to do that. <clears throat> I, I thank God for all the new friends that he has brought along our path as well. I'd like to thank Kristen, Madison, and Zachary for their sacrifice, uh, for allowing me to follow God's call on my life as well. I'm thankful for them and their support that they give me. With God's help, they have motivated me and helped me along the way, and I can't thank God enough for them. There you go. Since last we met, we've had a lot going on over this last year, and I couldn't be prouder of what God is doing. 
Since our last annual meeting, we have launched our MOPS, our Mothers of Preschool group, and we've had our first upward basketball camp. Vacation Bible School has continued to be a strong source of activity, as well as all the guests that we see, and we'll see again in just a few weeks. We've hosted missionaries, the Gideons International, and even hosted a concert from the Garms family. We've had more ladies' Bible studies and men's Bible gathering, study gatherings in the prior year. Above and beyond all of that, we have seen God working in the lives of His people. We were able to conduct our first baptisms in this building ever. That was kind of cool. Though the Lord, and though the, through, the, through the Lord working in the lives of Doug and Josie South and Crystal Kirby. We've seen the healing and growth in lives and the hearts of people. We've been able to help several families with needs in their homes. We've helped from things all the way from groceries to assistance with utility bills and other necessities. We've been able to do what God has asked, to do, asked of us and help out our brothers and sisters. In these ways and more, and more, we've been able to fulfill the command given to us in John 15, verse 12. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Some more thank yous. I'd like to thank the church board for their work and dedication to this church. Jamie Shelton, Beth O'Neill, David O'Neill, Ron Anderson, and Joanne O'Neill. I appreciate all that you have done for the kingdom, not just for this church, but for his kingdom, for his people, and for me and my family as well. It's wonderful to have people who love God in this church as much as I do to work side by side with. So the State of the Union is some statistics. If this is a State of the Union report, what is our State of the Union? I could sum it up this way, steady and stable. Even, some, even though some families moving away into the normal lack of better terminology, comers and goers, we have still seen it, albeit slight, growth during this time period of June 18 through April 19. There's some statistics on the back. I won't bore you with all of those, but you can see. Um, I'm, uh, this is where the pastor nerd comes out in me. I like to look at stuff like this. Uh, and, and it's not, it's, the emphasis is not about numbers of people in seats. That is, that is not why we count what we count. It's, it's a metric that we use to show how the church is doing, and it shows the church's health. But it is not a measuring stick, by, the only measuring stick by any means. So you can see that we've still had a, a, a small gain from over the same time period. Again, like Joanne said, we can only report from June to April because we're still counting May. All of those numbers will be turned into the district at the end of, of May. But you can still see even with the families that we've lost and the ones that have come in, we've still managed a, a net gain of two. Uh, you can see the Easter's. Uh, that, I thought that was rather interesting. The last two Easter's we've had uh, been fairly consistent with what we've had. Some of my statistics, 47 sermons preached, tw chaired 12 board meetings, three salvations that I am aware of, three baptisms, one baby dedication, two weddings officiated, one local minister's license presented, countless opportunities of meetings and opportunities to, to meet and interact with you, the congregation, and the members of this church. As Joanne reported, our finances are strong. We continue to operate with zero debt, praise the Lord, and, we, and all of our monthly bills are paid in full each month. Our, bid, our budgets that we pay to the district and the general church have continued to be paid in full each and every single month. Joanne, I was actually going to ask, we've done, we've been, we paid our budgets like every year infinitum haven't we yeah we've that makes a ds happy by the way <laughs> i want to say thank you for the faithfulness and helping us do all of this through your tithes and your offerings this year with the blessings of the church board and a commitment from myself that i would not have it interfere with the work needing to be done here at the church i began to substitute teach as well as substitute bus drive at the school some may wonder why i'm doing this and trust me people have asked I do want to go on the record to, that I that I do not have to do, I do not do this for financial reasons. The church has been very generous to my family in the fa financial package that they have given us. So please know that it is not f for that reason. So why do I do it? I do it because it has allowed me the opportunities to get to know more of the children and teens of this community. It's even given me opportunities to speak some positivity into the lives of some of these kids who may not hear it at home. It has also allowed me to share God's love with some of them as well some who have not heard of his love for them. It's just another way for myself and the church to get into the lives of the people that call Kinmare home. So what does the future hold for Kinmare Church of the Nazarene? 
As I mentioned before, VBS is right around the corner, literally, and Beth and Shelley spearheading it yet again. I want to thank them for their dedication of this huge undertaking, and I thought about putting huge in really big print, bold, underlined, but I didn't. As many of you know, this will be their last year of heading this up, and so we'll be looking to what the future of VBS will look like. These are huge, again, that should have been big print too, huge shoes to fill. And I know that it will take, I know that God has a plan in place on what that will look like next year. Our MOPS program will be, tr be transitioning as well. As many of you know, God has called Will and Stephanie Clark away from Kinmare. With that, Stephanie will be stepping down from her leadership role with MOPS very soon. I'd like to also thank her for helping us get MOPS up and running. That was no small feat. I will be working with her on who will try to fill her shoes as well and move that ministry forward. As I mentioned earlier, we were about to open registration for our second upward basketball camp, and this year we'll be holding it at the Kinmare High School gym. That made me really, really happy, by the way. Sorry, I'm a nerd. Anyways, <clears throat> prayerfully, we will have more children to fill that large space. We've had lots of positive feedback from last year's participants, and we are praying that this will lead to more kids joining. Upward is still, in my opinion, one of the best evangelistic outreach programs out there, and I am so blessed to see it here in Kenmare. With lots of prayer and discussion on the church board, we have put together a small exploratory committee headed by me to look at the, completing, the completion of the future sanctuary. When this building was purchased in 1991, the dream was that this area behind the wall of the current sanctuary would become a larger and sp more spacious space for us to worship Him in. Time and things happened, and the idea was placed on pause. Our prayer is that the Lord will provide the ability to accomplish the original goal and dream of utilizing this space that is as it was first intended. Please be in prayer for the Lord. Please be in prayer for the Lord's will in this endeavor. We want to be mindful of His will, His funds, and the ability to use this building for outreach opportunities. This summer, we are doing something that we've never done before. Starting on Wednesday, June twelfth. From 7 p.m. to 8 p.m., we will be hosting outreach cookouts during our normal Wednesday night Bible study time. We will be fixing a free dinner for the kids and the families that will be at the Kenmare Pool on Wednesday nights. We will set up tables and chairs and invite anyone who wants the opportunity to come over to eat. We will just simply share, we will simply serve and visit as well as get to know the families. We will love on them just, just excuse me, we'll love on them and just reach out to them. I'm very excited about what chances this brings us to, to give love to our community. Acts 1.8 tells us this, But if you will, you, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. Outside these doors is our Jerusalem, our Judea, our Samaria, and the ends of the earth. On a personal note, many of you know that Kristen and I traveled to Fergus Falls, Minnesota this past week for ordination interviews at the Prairie Lakes District offices. For those of you who may not be unfamiliar with what ordination of the Church of the Nazarene is, it is a culmination of work and the process that the church requires for their ministers. From the Church of the, Manu church of the Nazarene Manual says this, Ordination reflects the biblical belief that God calls and gifts certain men and women for ministerial leadership. Ordination is the act of the church which recognizes and confirms God's call as stewards and proclaimers of the gospel and the church of Jesus Christ. Ordination bears witness to the church universal and the world at large that this candidate reveals a life of holiness, possesses gifts and graces for public ministry, demonstrates a thirst for knowledge, especially for the word of God, and displays capacity to communicate sound doctrine. So after those interviews this last week, I am happy to announce that I am very humbled to say that I will be ordained this August at the Prairie Lakes District Assembly. This is a huge... Thank you. <clears throat> this is a huge honor and a capstone of sort of the work over the past eight years of my life. Of course, all praise and glory... I should have put glory out there. Praise goes to God for, for what he is doing in my life. Also, again, thanks to Kristen, Madison, and Zachary for supporting me on this journey, a journey that does not end with ordination, as this is a journey that I will be on until he calls me home. So in closing, I want to leave with you the word of the apostle, the last words given to us from him in 1 Thessalonians 5, 28 through 23 through 28. My God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. 
may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Brothers and sisters, pray for us. Greet all God's people with a holy kiss. I charge you before the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers and sisters. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Respectfully submitted, Pastor Brad Griffin. Thank you. Now, it's not on the agenda, but I guess hey, we're doing okay time-wise. I'm happy with this. Um, does anybody have any questions about anything that we have done over the past year, any things that we're doing uh, over the next year? And when I say year, keep in mind, I'm, I'm thinking church year in this regard, but any thoughts, questions, comments? This is your chance. Oh, yeah. They are not set at assembly like they used to be, mm. but every month I have to report to the district or to the general, <coughs> excuse me, general church the amount that comes in for Sunday school um, offering, regular offering, any any other offerings that we take, and then our budget for the month is based on that. So we aren't assigned a certain budget. We used to be. And sometimes it was kind of hard because if we'd have a good year financially, then we had large budgets mm -hmm. for the next year. And then maybe the next year we have bad. There's um, a percentage on each one of those yeah. line. I can't remember what they are. You, uh, you know how much. Five and a half percent for the WEEP uh, World Evangelism Fund, which is our district, or our general budget. Our district budget has the same 5.5 percent. Five, 5 Pensions and benevolence, which goes to help uh, ministers, missionaries. Uh, sometimes a pastor will get in a bad financial straits or something because of illness or whatever, and that goes to help them. And then the education fund. Mm -hmm. And our educational fund goes to uh, Mid-America and Kansas. No, yeah, Kansas. Yeah. yeah. It's one thing that is always impressed me about the Church of the Nazarene is they, they take care of their pastors. Um, they, they do a wonderful job. Um, you know, we're not in this for the money. <laughs> I never met a rich Nazarene pastor. <laughs> I never met a rich pastor in general, come to think of it. But anyways, um, but they do a very good job of, of taking care of their pastors when uh, it is time for them to hang it up. Although I've never really met a truly retired Nazarene pastor, come to think of it. <laughs> They're all filling in for some other pastor somewhere else. But um, anyway, so that, when we talk about the, the budgets that we pay to the general church and, and whatnot, that's some of what that goes for to, to help take care of, of pastors. And, and like Joanne said, in times of strife or trouble or uh, in need uh, or when the, uh, it also helps feed the retirement fund that the general church has uh, set up for, for pastors. So. Mm -hmm. All of those funds come to about 13% of the... Well, it's between yeah. 5.5 and 5.5. That would be 11 and 16%. 16, so 16% 16 of our income mm -hmm. each month mm -hmm. goes towards one of those four... Mm -hmm. four. Three, four funds, those funds. So, well, where does the rest of it go? It stays here within the local church. Uh, it uh, keeps these lights on, uh, keeps food on my table. <laughs> uh, but more importantly, it goes to funding the mission. You know, allowing us to go and do the things that we. Uh, are led by God to go and do, um, you know, help pay for kids go to camp, uh, help cover uh, things for upward basketball, pay for things like VBS and and like our cleaning supplies and all that. Yeah, clean. Keep the yeah, clean and all yeah. That I mean, everything you see here is paid for by tithes and offerings. So, so. Little things everybody for. Yeah. Yeah, and I will reiterate what Joanne said. For a church our size, uh, we are in a very, very, very good <coughs> financial situation. Uh, I, I vaguely remember the 
the number of ca the, the cash on hand when I got here was right around that same $24,000. So yeah. over almost two years now, uh, we have managed to, to maintain uh, that. And God has just been so faithful through, through that. So um, one thing that I did leave out of my report, <clears throat> my voice is going, that's not good, uh, is that in June, mid-June, um, the district superintendent will be here. Every two years, the, uh, the general church requires that pastors go through a review uh, of their performance in the church. Just like any job review that you would have in, in corporate America, it's kind of the same mentality. So uh, the DS will be here on Saturday the 15th, I think. Uh, yeah, right before Father's Day. And <laughs> they will, uh, he will meet with the board and they will uh, review uh, me and uh, and whatnot. So um, if you hear conversation of that, that is that is what that is about. So I mean, you know, not that I'm worried about this, but realistically, that is the opportunity. If if a, if a relationship between a pastor and a church is not good, is the opportunity for the church to say, hey. We love you, but this isn't working out, and, and everybody goes their separate ways, and, and the church begins a pastoral search at that point. Again, I'm not necessarily worried about that, but, <laughs> um, but just so you guys kind of have an understanding of, of what the process is, uh, every two years that, that happens for every Nazarene pastor. So, Any other? I believe it's there. they've moved it down to every two. I may be wrong, but right, right, right. This thing is moving. All right. Well, anything else? Okay. Hey, we're making good time. This is this is working for me. All right. Well, thank you guys for coming. I'm going to ask Ron to to pray for us. He's going to probably beat me up in the parking lot after church but anyways <laughs> he made the mistake of telling me he doesn't he can't tell me no so <laughs> had my name on here already. yeah i already had your name on there too <laughs> he puts my name on there then he asked me yeah <laughs> i made that 11 45 last night okay <laughs> oh shelly Oh, yeah, yeah. Sh Shelly, I asked her this morning, too. <laughs> yeah. uh, would you mind? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's white out. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. Heavenly Father, I'd like to thank you so very much for this day that you've given us. Thank you for bringing these fine people together to discuss your meeting here, what's happening mm. in our church. Yes. Lord, I also thank you so very much for this church thank and the people Lord. that are involved yes. in it. Lord, I always ask you to, to watch over Doug and mm. Josie as they go on their new adventure yes. in life. Lord, I ask this in your name. Amen. 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 Again, thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. Uh, there's still some grub over there, so feel free to grab some more. You don't necessarily have to go home. You can hang out if you want to. Uh, I'd ask that the 2019-2020 board just go meet with me up front just for a little while. And that concludes our meeting. Thank you, guys. Oh, yes, yes, the list. Okay, hold on, i got to find it. So the election results, again, are Ron Anderson, Kristen Griffin, Beth O'Neill, David O'Neill, and Lane O'Neill.